action. Yeah, they're testing B very quickly. Heroic bouncing in with their Glocks, and it's Bubsky's USP to be the first to return fire. Repositioning into more passive stance. Yet to see them cross. That smoke will isolate the jewels to just that right side of the generator. And oh, lovely idea, but poor execution. They do end up getting massacred. The run boost on top of the box. One of my favorite little pocket strats. But the rogue got nothing to show for that pistol round. Nice double out of Dupree to end it. Bubsky as well receiving them as that first man. I don't think they did a single point of damage just there. Uh, I don't think they even landed a bullet. So heroic, uh, not picking up where they left off on Inferno. This is their map choice of Vertigo. Wake me up before you Vertigo Whee! go. I love it. It's just something so simple, but it's so satisfying. Run boost onto a high <laughs> elevated. <laughs> okay. I wonder who he's mocking. I, I don't I know. Wonder who he I could don't know. Possibly be. Uh, do you think? Do you know, maybe I he's just that fired up. Alex. Maybe. Maybe he's being. Look, Chad. You were just saying it's 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 about pride. Maybe it is a, a bit legitimate. Of a, a grudge match, perhaps. Dupree yeah. hates Cadian. Heard it here first. Oh my. God. That's right. The drama. That's the right. TMZ. You wouldn't believe what he's been saying about him behind his back. We've got to keep it some somewhat interesting. <laughs> the. Uh, Soap opera of Counter-Strike continues. Well, this little rear grass with the uh, rifle's top of a ramp is about to get hot. Tessus is the only one watching. Oh, he's done so well to get, never mind away from that, but does damage as well. It doesn't deter them, and great spray from the boys there has chipped away even further. Refresh finished off by the nade. So they got some digs. They got a couple of players still alive, and sandbags to be cleared. He wouldn't go for the wall. Oh, he bang sees your little turd, doesn't he? Does he? Spotted something. You can see his furrowed brow, but he doesn't mind. Matt, when Magic strafes on out, Stown does well to cage him. Alex Bubsky and Clive are low. They are. It's not out of the question of Acadian scout. Uh, this flank for Dupree could be the undoing factor here. He is just going to push to contain. Stown's sound cue will be heard, and that forces Dupree forward. So it should be only a matter of seconds here, unless something catastrophic unfolds. Brrrr. Not even. One little burst and Dupree dunks for our finish. Nice start from Astralis, getting into Heroic's map pick of Vertigo. We also get to see a bit more of Astralis' Vertigo, which isn't one we always get to see. Yeah, and I think with Lucky on board, every new map that we uh, we get to witness from them will be seeing in the direction they want to go. It is going to take a lot of time for this Astralis roster to get things where they want it. Fun fact Friday for you, Chadney. Okay. This is actually the first Vertigo we've seen between Astralis Heroic this year. Okay, well, that's so quite nice. Go. So get to see how that one shapes up. How do you feel about the uh, AK on Stown right now? I reckon it's going to do absolutely nothing. He's going to catch an aid and then... Uh, catch another nade. And teammates will pick up the AK and then they might catch an aid. Yeah, this hasn't uh, gone to script whatsoever. Refresh actually invested in getting that into the hands of, hands of Stown, so... Oh, they are so dead. They are so dead right now. Oh. Gonna get absolutely wrecked oh. out here, and that's a free AK going into round number four. So in the first three rounds of play, we only have two kills, assuming Kadian doesn't get anything done with this dirty dig. Dupree's doing what Refresh did in the early stages of uh, Inferno, yeah. just racking up Frags here, there, and everywhere. Bit of standoff. Yeah, I'm um, like the silver in me is just uh, happy that they've retrieved the AK-47. I was worried that was going to sit idle on those stairs a little too long. And now Cadian will be hunted down, and they're probably just happy to have had an SMG grab that one. An extra 600 bucks for their AWPA coming into round four. I don't know. I, the AK buy into a B rush, like, interesting. Curious. Curious indeed. Now Refresh has to operate with a Deagle. He uh, has the utility behind it. He requires everybody else with the AK-47. So if everything goes to plan, he will be able to pick up an enemy's weapon or maybe one of his teammates. So not the end of the world. Gap Smoke coming out towards scaffolding and fast mid. It's just a bit lucky stuck in. He's already dead. Kadian down to eight. Might want to be careful as he jumps down towards middle. And there's another. So trying to play around the smokes. Tessus over the top. It's a two-man advantage quickly here for Heroic in round number four. 
and yet they return to B. This is where Dupree, who's scorching hot start in these opening three, has netted him seven frags. And Tessis is continuing. <laughs> just sending him A. He's just single-handedly winning the jewels. Magisk and Glaive both down to his hand, and Util into B. They start their commit. Dupree could still cause an They're issue. Both close, aren't they? Oh, but flashed off at the perfect time. They catch him in the open. And only Bubski. One man against the army, and the flash looks good, actually, to peek out for another. Looking very threatening is Bubski. Will take just two. And Astralis will fall in the fourth. Okay, three to one. Refresh doesn't have to pay too much of a price for that uh, AK-47, and now he gets one of his own. Interesting purchase here from Astralis. Like, this will be the first real gun round, right? There we had a couple of emissions with this MP9. You get to see falling out of the hands of Lucky here. But they've gone double orps into the next round of play. So Lucky, yeah, we understand that. Bubski wielding the secondary, and, uh, well, he's going to be holding middle with that big green. So, look, it, it makes it a bit easier for them to hold on some of these longer-range fights, but regardless of that, Magis is getting stuck on in. Glaive doing what Glaive does best, pushing straight on down Scaff. And this time he takes down Tessus. Well, that's one response to the Tessus A lurk of the round prior. Now, when they head back towards B, Bubski's AWP is here. This is an easy kill if they just jiggle in without a flash which you'd expect them to do, considering Lucky firing off shots elsewhere. Util is going to come over before the peak, and just as Vision's denied, so is Shush. And Heroic back to the drawing board. Yeah, they're stalled out completely here. All right, they know that Dupree is likely over towards Quaron B because he dropped a smoke on the molly. Refresh would need to hit this kill, and playing around the smokes is Glaive evacuating at the perfect time. So you need to fill this void that he left. But as you push on up and you try and take this control, you have to worry about sandbags late. They have a molly for that. And you also have to always keep an eye on the re-aggression re through Scaff. Yeah, this is great. I do love this. Just clearing it through. Stance, good for one. Magisk will tuck into the sandbags, begging for Lucky for some sort of support. He actually doesn't need it. Gets another on the re-peak. Cadian slipped the net a little. Magisk obviously aware of it. But a nice first shot. shot out of Cadian. It's a good one. Lucky should have the deny here. Cadian's tried to fake it out. Bubski with the AWP calls the buff as well. Nice catch from Cadian. If he could get the bomb down uncontested, now opts for another fake. Not ready for Lucky. Never mind Dupree. So Astralis quickly punched Heroic back down. And they didn't actually pick up the secondary AWP there. Uh, so the game plan that they had in that first gun round, I don't know why they wouldn't have grabbed that. Maybe Bubski didn't want to rock a secondary AWP. They've juggled the guns across. Four M4s. Now, you'd think MAC-10s indicate something quick. Heroic have bought two MAC-10s alongside for the ride with these Kalashnikovs, prioritizing perhaps a set of nades. Yeah, they're not on a full commit right here. Right? They've just limped out the utility to kind of dissuade any early aggression, boosting over the left-hand side of the smoke, and they might have a fight here any second. Dupree needs to be very careful about this. Can't fumble his movement and make a sound cue. But being so up close and personal, it's a it's an all-in position, but it also gives him a lot of info that there's nobody pressuring the site. Oh, jeez. Tia Tessis is ready for the off-angle of Magisk and Glaive there as well. Double. Great stuff. Straight into the site. Tessis is comfortable at the moment. And he's even ready for that. Lucky holding what could look like a safe angle has resulted in his loss of the AWP. What are you supposed to do? It's been scavenged away, thrown away towards Cadian as well to play from short. Yeah, it might be a save call Has here. Has to be, I think. I don't think we'll see a chase like we did out of Heroic on Inferno after they won their force by and then took away all the guns. I think Pubsky and Dupree will be allowed to live here. But that's all Tessus. There's <laughs> no other conversation about that. That's two huge shots to hit. And that's two rounds where his two kills on A have opened up the round. Yeah, working this ramp as well, I, I guess it's a fight in the beginning of the round that you can potentially talk about in a similar vein as Inferno, all the utility being thrown out from both teams, right? So we obviously know the aggressive CT smoke that goes down towards the bottom of the ramp, but in response to that, there's been a couple of smokes that come out. Nafani and Art kind of popularize the one that you throw bank off the wall that lands next to the scaffolding position. You can one way over that, see top crane. You can also use that to avoid any Molotovs and whatnot coming out of the scaffolding and gap position. And then it's about the flashes the CTs are getting, how much do they want to fight. There's so many little micro details in those utility combinations. So it might be this 
buy and then an, a weaker one next round if they don't hold on to any of these guns. Let's see how far they can push this. Tassis is testing his luck again. Flash through by his squad and he's holding up that upper ramp. Avoided the nade damage there nicely as well. So, so much pressure already being applied towards A and it's forced everybody from Astralis to respect this. They've all headed over here to bolster up the defense. Yeah, in your Inferno analogy, in your Banana analogy, consider this half wall. He's up. And the next fight's a little more threatening. They've got so many bodies here. Astralis is so ready for it. Bubski could be Tassess's first victim. He is oof, stuck between two fights. The first bullet out of Lucky's Deeg is a good one. Cadian does catch another. But they are testing B, and that should be enough for the bomb to start slinking back as well. It's up to Magisk here. Like, if he can in any way in capacity stop this clear and make it seem like B is an un unsafe, Shush will that at least take enough. that space, and you'd think that's enough. Glaive is going to test the waters, but it results in his death. More to come. Dams down. Okay. Just ensuring that everybody knows the round is over. We stay with your uh, water team there for a moment. It's like Heroic had, you know, multiple fishing rods in, right? They, they were having a look to see if they could get either bomb site, And that's one of the things that Heroic do quite well. And I think it's an undervalued... Well, I don't know if it's undervalued. Maybe it's underutilized by certain teams. But you have to have so much confidence in your individuals to be able to do something like that. Because if either prong just gets completely decimated, doesn't trade, doesn't value life, isn't able to get information or at least territory, then you've just gone on two different fronts and lost on two different fronts. Fair. But do you not think by the nature of the beast that is the CT side, having always having someone to punish some uh, that, that reaction, as in, to, you know, the whole idea is you're trying to hit the site with the least amount of defenders, sure. right? So if you're kicking up a fuss on one part of the map, it feels like it's almost uh, you're, you're missing out. If you don't have someone to confirm your suspicions about forcing those numbers across, that's just doing it in, like, hard mode where you don't have a body of the assault. You've got a 2-2 two -two split. Lucky did lose out on the last second of that save as well, so very nice stuff from Heroic to make it hurt extra. No bonus AK-47 in the mix for this eco. Yeah, what you're, you're talking about there is like how good lurkers can be, right? Yeah. But you need to know when to be an aggressive lurker or a passive lurker. Shush is about to farm a couple here, jumping across the screen. They TK, but they do get the kill. So a two for one. Now Stown's chance. How many is he going to pick up with the remaining three CTs? Bobski hanging out at a festival on top of a porta potty right there. Porter potties, you're sending me into a dark rabbit hole of memories there. Do you want to get into discussions about, like, no, actually, we won't. We won't. <laughs> no? No. Not even going to give. tell me no. what you're thinking? No, okay. no. Cook that one up in the chamber. There's certain things that are probably too unsanitary for broadcast. I'll leave that one off the oh, list. Oh, Portaloo stories, yeah. Been in a couple in my time. Especially, dude, here's the thing. This is to anybody out there who has ever had to use a, a portable toilet on a site for a festival when it's 40 degrees. It's like an oven of human waste. It's yeah. Oh, you've been so very articulate. I, uh, I completely understand what you're talking about. The aroma. Mm. On a hot summer's day. Yeah. The plastic, like they already, because there's just the heated plastic already mm. gives you a certain <laughs> twang. It does. Oh, it's always joyous as well when there's... Uh, like the cobwebs and there's like spiders up in the corners. Well, and stuff. stop now, stop now. You got me a little <laughs> anxious. Heebie yeah. jeebies. Yeah, like especially in Australia, you've got the little <laughs> bibbly wobbly, tiny <laughs> fingernail spiders that can kill you. Yeah, well. Uh, about nine rounds of play. This is our ninth. No spiders here in Counter Strike. You're safe with us. But we are on the web. Oh, indeed, we are, Dad. Worldwide web. I heard Trey say triple W. Has anyone ever said that before? Uh, I'm almost certain like that we all agreed at one point when the internet was created, we say we just say the W's. But triple W, does it is it, it qu works, it's is functional. it quicker than saying WWW? Probably is. Triple dub. And it looks like it could be a heroic dub here. They have the psych. Tessis is dead. Oh, he throws everything he can as he does escape, evades the flames. Panic stations, though, for Astralis. They're going to have to get out of there. They, I mean, they'll have to go for one of these eventually. Lucky catches the early hunt from Cadian. They might actually want to have a push for these now. So they have a little bit of bank balance now, Heroic. So if they want to try and take away and deny the AWP, we know how much of a cruel mistress the CT side economy is. 
not necessarily the easiest of lines to get past. And you've got Magisk here ready to drop a smoke on his shot. So this is reactionary stuff just to deny the hunt. And you've got Glaive making sure they can't flank through A. So they should be safe and sound. Doesn't look like Heroic are going to get too ravenous for it. And on the T side of Vertigo, you don't really need to operate with an AWP. It's nice to like pick over the A ramp smoke or lock down a little bit of territory. You love seeing it on the T's when they get A, A control, you know, from sandbags. Bomb goes off and now Heroic will take the lead in this one. First time that they have actually taken the lead in this map. It's 4-1 at one point after Astralis opened the account with the pistol around the conversion, even weathered the storm of the hero AK, but they still lost that first gun round. And Cadian has actually bought into the T-sided AWP here. With more heavy presence middle, very fun. Oh, oh, that's oh, naughty. Oh, oh, oh. oh, the counter nade's almost as good though. Did that just do 150 damage? That must yeah. have been right on the money. So oh, they, wow. they get the kill, but to be fair... Technically. Yeah. <laughs> but as numbers go, Astralis' nade is better. And that could have done even more. That All right. was juicy, wasn't it? Very juicy. Love the nades, though. They bounced them off the girder. Dunked on Glaive. A, a counter-response nade from the B site. Dunks are the three-man heroic mid-take to 50 HP apiece. And we're left with a very fruity mid-round. Get ready for a weird one, because you can see they're all spread out on the default. They've parked down in mid, anticipating a boost for info or a clear of the corner one way or the other. Cadian in support of that. If they head to A, that's the best option right now because they can just smoke Lucky off. But Heroic, they don't know exactly what this CT-sided setup is looking like. Shush is very passive watching B, so there could be B lobby control granted. He's coming back to mid. Yeah. They want to just basically carry on as they were. Now, this is where it, it could really fall apart. Magisk is close towards the sandbag position. It's likely he gets more than one frag from here. Yeah, you'd expect at least one. Oh, my goodness. A very quick double. Stown does well to make his low HP count, and he does 25. evaporate there. Going to have to be very quick. Dupree lies in wait for the B commit. Shush is going to have to go off this. The pop flash was great, but Vision has restored. And Dupree, oh, he saw him. Just a glimmer of his head. Wait, they're going And a. more shots confirm they're this going B a. presence. It forces the rotate. Shush has sold it, and they will have time to plant on A. <laughs> I didn't even keep track of that. I thought it was the full B commit. They've got the bomb down. Now they've got themselves a 3v2 situation and having to retake a Bubski and Lucky. Good luck. Oh, and already Tessus finishes it off. Shush was kicking up such a great fuss. He convinced Chad Sponge Burchill. They were chasing their tail. Well, I, I, I was chasing my tail there. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, okay, so they're going for the B split off. The fact that they get the bomb, they get out. They get back to A, well, Stan, and Shush gets the kill. Stan was mid with the bomb at 10 HP, right? I'm pretty sure he had the bomb. And yeah, it at about at 25 seconds. This is Glaive taken down by those lovely stack nades off the girder. Magis nearly gets three here, and this is how it ends. Oh. Either he saw Lucky and started shooting, and then Bubsky ran into it, or he started shooting at Bubsky, and Lucky ran into it. Either way, that Yikaroonies. One way from Shush. That's going to get you feckles up on B. Ooh, Ooh. What the bloody hell is that from Bubsky? Strolls into mid, snaps the head off of Stown, and leaves triumphant with an AK-47. He's heading towards A as well. He needs to be there, and he will be in time. One way smoke dropped out over towards the crane here will give them a bit of a buffer right now, Astralis. But off of that one way smoke, are they going to look for info, or are they just hoping that it forces Heroic away? Yeah, they're just going to go on this. And they've negated the one way. Oh, no, wait, that's a CT smoke. All right. Space is being taken. Magic could have to do something crazy here. Yeah, and that AK to overwatch Magisk's pushed up gap. Playing around it enables a little bit of an element of surprise. It's going to be even trades favoring Heroic, though, as Shush does catch that aggressive Deeg. The and they're not rushing this plant. They're really not rushing. Lucky lingers, pops on up, and Shush still too good. They're all full health, and they will tag him up, but not much more than that. 
Heroic just, it always feels like whenever there is, that someone has been caught out, there's another member that hasn't uh, on their takes. You know, like Astralis, a lot of their, their gimmicks and moves do find success, but Heroic often have a A little, little bit of a look over there with this Spirit Vitality game. Spirit actually won the first map 16 to 9. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to say I predicted it, but I do a little stream in the morning, Alex, and I, I said that I think Spirit are going to win that one. Just based off the fact that, that it doesn't matter. Yeah, and it's not because I don't think that that uh, Vitality are going to try. It's that I think both teams are going to try, right? But I think that the map pool actually and and the looseness that Spirit can play with it lines up very nicely for them. Mm, it's the kind of Counter Strike that attributes well to their style of yeah, play. Yeah, like, the map pool they got is fantastic. They get to play Dust Two, Mirage, and then Nuke being the leftover. If it, was, if it was overpass, they would have really been loving that. But Nuke, uh, sorry, Dust Two and Mirage are, are great for them. You don't love to hear all that you tell on B when you've gone for a gamble stack mid. And, oh, Dupree, as he does return from his mid vacation, is hit with bullets. Bubsky's finished off onto Shush. Refresh, though, huge opportunity. And Bubsky jumps straight over him. Oh, multiple members didn't expect me to be there. Hiding in plain sight, I think. Tessus's flank has knocked Magis for six. And, yeah, just saving as best he can is lucky. Hasn't had much of an opportunity to contribute in this round. They uh, they hit the perfect site. Astralis had two members stacked in mid that round. The Cadian's even hunting. Oh. Kill him. Bit hard done by there. Yeah, he's lucky. got a no scope in him. Woo! Doesn't even need to with the quick fingers on that. Does get to the right click in time. And it's Tessus that will ruin his day. It almost gets in there again as well. Lucky with those, uh, those keen young eyes. What's he looking at? 18, that's right. Yep. 18. Do you remember 18? I was taking it all for granted. Russian B. <laughs> Eyes are in the sky, voiding nades. Not a care in the world. Not a care in the bloody world. Off to LAN, packing my computer into my mum's car. 18. Getting beaten up at nightclubs. What a time to be alive. Well, upgraded pistols here for Astralis. Let's see how much more of an onslaught are coming on in for Heroic as pretty clear they want to head towards this A-bomb site. Early elevated position from Magis. Can't convert. There is uh, a lot of clear runway towards this A-site right now. They're just pushing their fight and their biff and they're beating them. Let's give it to Stout. He wants his fourth. He's going to go for a stylish smoke Glock push. Got very quick three. You can reload now. No, no. He's committed to the Glock now. It's but a he Glock can reload now. Glock only mission. Okay. I might get the ace, now that he's reloaded. Ah, Kadian, he wants some too. Stan's been great in this group stage. It's really good to see. This is the thing, I think like Heroic, when we can talk about them being a good team, mm. it's great when we go, yeah, Tassus is playing well and Refresh is having his moments and Kadian's orping and calling well. And I want, and it's it just because this is how most teams seem to function for consistency purposes. I want Stan to be the consistent star, mm. right? I want him to be contributing at a high level. Uh, we know that Refresh is a bit more of that X Factor, Shush is a bit more of the anchor player. So I think what, like, oh, that looks great crazy. from that POV, actually. Love that. It's like the perfect three man spray cam. And that was a little bit of a deviation from the three man spray definition, but very stylish all the same. Nine for Heroic on their T campaign here, map two. In the game today on our main stream. And speaking of X Factor, Refresh has walked straight into Bubsky's mid fight and just demanded a frag and gets an AWP for good measure. I think Refresh actually denied that. He said, no, not it's, interested. It's kind of like they're just scrimming, scrimming on him right here. It's so fast. They're just going for these fights and then they hit the brakes, they hit pause. They know aggressive maneuvers have to come like this. And that's a great response from Glaive. Smoke criminal. I think he's probably taken that title from Stewie. Yeah, he was up to his usual smoky antics in an earlier game I was watching. Yeah, I think it was the what the first Inferno game we did with him with Spirit, where he was just like running down banana, just owning everybody. It was wild. It did look like he was up to his old tricks. Now that you've lost all this A control, they're about to risk going through. How many can Glaive get? Oh, this is Glaive's world. We're just living in it. Molotov them off nicely, and he just dumps Util and Scarpa. So Rock have done that. Didn't have to do much actually to take him out of that part of the map, and that suddenly opens up Vertigo again. They yeah. can they can play the fakey boy style, but I don't know if they've got the time for that. They've got no prongs outside of this uh, body of assault. Oh, regression! Yeah, he loves it. 
Kadian tagged up heavily, burnt to a crisp. Magis finishes the job, and it will be the double aggress this time onto Stout's position. He's ready, gets nothing for it. Solid, active defense here from Glaive and Magisk. You need a scorch around a shush, and already tagged up heavily. Need to find this missing ingredient. Glaive has evaporated. The bomb does go down. Oh. No, it doesn't. Great timing on the wall bang. Round one. Lucky's pulled it off. Shush will just have to hide in plain sight. And they'll let him have it. Ooh. They got the AWP back there as well. Dupree just got his hands on it there before the round ended. So that's important. Money isn't fantastic for Astralis. And we are going into our final round of play here. Money on the other side of things for Heroic is great. Right? They can have whatever they want and more. They wanted to buy for themselves a couple of times, leave some AKs in spawn, get your deagles, buy a Zeus, treat yourself, right? Why not? It's been a good half. Yeah, Caden can choose his favorite AWP skin. They'd love a 10-5, though. They would love a 10-5 here. Pupski, oh, he's on a 5-7. That's all he can afford. Yikes. Tess is trying his little flash play where he gets flashed on through by his teammate. No sound cues this time. Sails on through. Report. Sandbag on the top. Now, but that's the counter. Oh, Magisk. Magnificent. Two and a half. From a... Oh, perfect. A loft angle. Look at Shush. He didn't get cleared by Dupree there. Did he see something? Nothing. Just hanging out. But, yeah, to return to Magisk, he's done that on his own. See how much it's destabilized Heroic. Refresh walking up on that close wall. Glaive in partnership with them. May get caught out here. Oh, oh dear. Straight through. Double domed. Astralis open for business. That's the counter. Popsky's going to get two here. Dancing around with a five seven. Three simultaneous broadcasts for our last day of Group A. Hey, hey, it's the pistol. Cadian's having a look. He's going to die in three. Never mind. Changed my mind. Glaive's lost his. And they're charging up short. Tess is a perfect angle over the smoke to knock another. It's Cadian instead that snatches it. He wants them all for himself. And three more players spotted. They know exactly where the remaining players are. The rotate's on its way. Cadian decides he wants to push short this time, and it's the perfect time. Oh, God, he's got them all if he wants them. Three frags for the in-game leader, and only Dupree left. Well, the flank's coming in, so I don't expect him to be too long for this world. They're about to work out. No, no, he wins this. He does? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you remember? No. I'm done remembering. He hits two ridiculous. That actually first one got me a little excited there. Nice. Either way, uh, that is going to put 10 very quickly into the pockets of Heroic, and I might even hazard a guess at an 11th. I hate that pistol round. Why? Well, I look, at the moment, I'm playing, like, probably the most Counter-Strike I've played in years. Yeah. I'm trying to play, like, a, a boatload of CS just to make sure that I'm not just bad, right? Ah. And uh, when I play Vertigo, the level of creativity that I see from individuals is rush... Gap is what we call it in the pug world, Alex. Scaffolding. Yeah. Uh, and we'll smoke the uh, the left side, and we'll run it into the side. You so you know what I do on the CT pistol? I buy a bloody CZ75 and a smoke, and I just smoke short, and they just they stop. And that's it. That's the round done. Count today. That's it. Thanks for coming. Anyway, one expert odds at the top of your screen. Look at him. He's not. He's not done. He isn't done. He hasn't even started actually. I think you, 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 you're, you're, that's enough, Kadian. Come on now. Oh, he's having fun. Let him have some fun. Because you know what they were going to do, Alex? Kadian has heard us on the VOD when he's watched them back go, all right, guys, and uh, what you're going to see the T's do here on the full eco is they're going to wait out all that utility here, make it as costly as possible for the CTs because they're going to have to use all their nades. So kadian has gone, I'm bloody fed up with that. Chad, you just raised your voice. You have to be considerate, you know. Someone's watching this on the TV. Oh, on the telly. They're, they're, they're co-living. They've on got... The they're, they have roommates, they have family members, and you've just got obnoxiously loud for no reason. They can't explain that one. Uh, Sorry, everyone. Sorry if, you, if that dis disturbed your roommates or uh, upset anyone. What am I saying? I literally shout. <laughs> when it gets hypey. <laughs> when it gets hypey. All right, first gun round underway here. Ladies and gents, Dupree. Ooh, through the deep molly. Toes tickled, 87. Kadian, another special adventure here. We're going to have to call him Dora the Explorer soon. Oh. Oh, Magis, this is yours all day of the week. Doesn't actually need to get activated or spotted out. Glaive has caught him, and Kadian definitely just uh, biting on that bit. He really wanted to keep going. He's been enjoying the aggression from the pistol and the 
following conversion. 11 to 6, Heroic Stand is the first buy from Astralis, has netted them that opening kill, and Tess is going to be playing a reactive smoke defense here. Oh, he's going to walk up on this. This is a Naphany smoke here. Yeah. Very naughty here in Refresh can perhaps provide some support. Glaze looking the wrong way. Tessa's unloading his mag. Oh, Does dink. dink lucky. And Refresh decides to play it passive. Understandably so, I say that. He may be biding his time because Down wants a fight. Magisk gr greets him with lead. And only one man left for the job. It's Refresh and Magisk has already chipped quite heavily away at his health pool. And a bit of a race now against the clock. He can't leave. He's screwed. Yeah, yeah. He can't go anywhere. He has been hunted down. Dupree is next challenge. He actually finished him off. I don't think he'd be ready for Bubsky right now. Yeah, he's no. just going to run with the knife out here in the butt. <gasps> with some of the flicky one taps, with like the last yeah. on Inferno, yeah. one of those shotty, I was like, all right, well, okay, maybe. Refreshed on the last one before the break. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Well, okay. They kept it costly ish, right? So only two Astralis players survive. They do win the round. They can drop guns across and they can get the buy going. I think Glaive's going to operate on something a little bit lighter. Yeah, Mac 10 being purchased on in. But an interesting little aggressive maneuver there from Heroic, not panning out by any means. And now they're going to be the ones in the odd buy scenario. Two Deagles, two M4s, and the AWP. No kits. Light on util. Sounds pretty animated too, isn't he? Loves a good reaction. He's been marinating in that Cadian marinade for a year or so. It's juicy, isn't it? Yeah. Refresh has immediately responded to their uh, utility. This boost is perfect. Enables him to at least cut Glaive down to the side. So what are you up to? Tess has wanted more. Wasn't happy with the man advantage. Refresh still in a lot of jeopardy around that smoke. Oh, that peek him. And he the gun. Get the gun. Oh. Doesn't get away. But down. Still ready to punish. This is a weird one. Just constantly expecting Astralis to have something somewhere else, but the whole squad's here, and now they should have a plan. Should have a round. Should have the round, yeah. I don't think Kadian's going to risk this retake with that AWP, so now it's just about a matter of Shush defending him and maybe trying to find a rifle throughout all of this. But the response there, the, the thing that I loved about that was that it's almost a bit of a bait and switch. So it's like, you're going to molly sandbag, that's a standard protocol when you're taking the A ramp as a T. And the response is, we'll have this boost ready because what's going to happen is two different things. If, they, if you smoke yourself out, they're either just going to focus, wait for you, smoke will fade, and then they can re-molly you. Or you get, get some hey cheese. Exactly. And if they pull the hey cheese out and that boost comes in, they are looking towards sandbag. They're not looking towards the boost anymore. So attention has been drawn. Tessa's coming out again. Hungry to save refresh there. Very hungry to do so, right? So that cost him in a big way. And then the trades fell in the favor of Astralis. And now, well, the scoreline is more than respectable. 11 to 8 will have to be an economical scenario. And here's the little tower. Run boost off for star points. I, I don't think. You think that's what thrust that, him into it? That's it. I got a bit horny off of it. Dude, if you've got the run boost, you're feeling pretty frisky. You just hit the first kill. Refresh is probably screaming about the pressure he's feeling. He's like, I got this. You get that superhero moment. Didn't quite manage to uh, manufacture it. So we are going to be seeing them play it an economical. Yeah, this is uh, a bit of an off angle here in middle. Yeah, Strong's were trying it too. Cadian has that AWP, and you even walk to Deagle up close, you know. If Astralis do commit to this, this is like the best bet Heroic have had. And there goes one. Will he get greedy for the AK? Oh, the, the buffer of that smoke is not big enough. He can't drop off. Oh, what? Darn it. No way. They got him. And he's even gotten away with the AK as well. The mid setups sprung its trap. And Astralis is so worse for wear. They're wobbly. Where did everyone go? Evaporate in middle. It was a shush double. P250 on top of him. That just does have a lot of space here, mind you. Now, Tessus is babysitting it with some jiggles here. Oh, but just in the timing, he's gotten two. He's been able to get this A bomb site open for business. Dupree now is hearing the rotation. He's going to get refreshed for free oh. here as well. Magisk has just won the round. <laughs> he might just do it all on his own. Kaden's already prioritizing the save, you'd imagine, despite them having a 5v2. Refresh has been so loud. Dupree's heard all of this, right? He's just sitting down here in the hidey hole with his bomb on the back, hoping that more kills come to Magisk, and he's pushing forward. He's now over towards CT spawn. He's going to get Kaden here as well. Whoa. Spoke too soon. Uh -huh. And so Dupree to finish what his Magisk has definitely started. He's pulled it straight into the realms of reality. Cadian to trifle with him. And Spotted I think him. he's got the info. That's huge. If he can get this bomb down. Got a 1v2 to play. Molotov out, ready to oh! And he's already caught one. The spread just a little too much.
Oh, fine margin to separating Dupree from escape there. I'm not sure how much more it was going to spread. A touch more on his back and his S key. Oof. Committing to the spray as well, like Kadian opted to just dip away, yeah. didn't he? Because I think Kadian maybe at that moment could be reconsidering the save. This is how it all started. This was the real action right here. And then Magis, the timing, because Tessus was just jiggling that, right? So what's happened is Shush has come across. Shush is now going to take that, and Tessus is going to reposition to heaven. But because it's all happened in a split second, Magis almost, almost stole oh. the round away right there. That was mental. And Bubski will be deploying that. So yeah, left with just three for this 21st round of play. Double orbs in play from Heroic. They just use another to feign B control as well. So they've already burnt through two of their smokes immediately. Uh, make that three. They've used three of their smokes already. They need to find something off of this. I mean, Tassis is there for the taking on his own. You just have to beat him. And Cadian's there for mid. Refresh does have a teammate in the form of not only one orb, but two. And it's only Cadian that's connecting right now. It's down peeking out, but it's a solid defense and nothing to report from Astralis' mid-adventure. Absolutely nothing. Oh, sound cue's been heard here as well. They know that they're trying to mantle up on this box. Oh, what is this? Cadian. Nice. Confidence. Overconfidence, perhaps. The boost as well. They're repositioning. Refresh could be caught here. It does get Ooh. spotted out. Getting a bit weird now. It certainly is, but looks like normality is restored. Refresh puts him himself on to 18 with a quick double to put the heroic boys within three rounds of closing this out. And it looks like it could very well be two. Just Glocks, 2K in the bank account, nothing for Astralis to spend into our next round of play. We'll see this from Cadian's POV, the first for sure. He did get a bit pushy after his second. I have some bad news, Alex. The Bears? The Bears. Nuke. They lost 16 to 11, ah. which with it, the ramifications in our matchup right here mean Astralis can no longer qualify even if they were to win this series. And that is a product of an incredibly well-played series between Ents and Astralis. Where Ents 2 owed them. 2 owed. Yeah. I might just bring that up so we can remind ourselves exactly what happened. I think, was it Nuke, that second map? Uh, it was indeed. And that's when they were just going super fast, yeah. right? Yeah. They were doing a lot of those faster maneuvers that we've been watching. The ancient victory from Ents as well, picking that against Astralis, testing their limits with the new roster. And Heroic, well, just two rounds away right now. They will top the group. It's just about going flawless here. And, well, the main storyline of this matchup tonight was the Danish Derby. So to come out on top, this is the fourth time these two teams have met in 2021. The most recent was over in IEM Cologne, and that's where Astralis got the better of them. The two previous occasions before that, Heroic had toppled their foe. And this is uh, always good when you, uh, I, I guess, the little brother. They're always going to remain the little brother over there in Denmark in, in terms of namesake. But if they can, well, become one of the best teams in the world on a consistent basis, then Heroic can uh, maybe steal a couple of those fans. Oh, 1-1 one, one over there. Yeah. Nuke is the third. On the third, I'm going to start to favor Vitality. Dexter on yard, though. You're right. Mir as well. He can be a bit of a nuisance. This one's falling apart for Astralis. Just testing as the smokes fade and they're ready to receive them. So it's Cadian. And this one, yeah, just a matter of time. Is that good friend Peter involved, you reckon? Peter? Petering out. Ah, uh, yes. He might be involved, I think. Oh, but I thought you were talking about Peter Rabbit. What about Peter Rabbit? Peter Rabbit, was he in the Wind of the Willows, or was that another one? Peter Rabbit was a separate venture. I don't know. That we were talking about the frog the other day, weren't we? Yeah, the, well, the frog the Toad of Toad Hall. I don't know if they're related okay. to Peter Rabbit. What about the Cheshire Cat? And Professor Tumnus is a completely separate fellow. <laughs> he's a fawn, I believe. A fawn? No? Is that not what he's called? I don't know. But the legs, the goat legs. You know, half goat, half man. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if it's a fawn. No, you're right. Half goat, half it's man. It's not a centaur, because that's, that's a horse, man. Half horse, half man. He's like half goat. I'll Google it right now. Yeah. Isn't the internet uh, uh, Half man, half goat. <laughs> no, you're right. Really? F-A-U-N. Fawn. All right, Alex. Good job, Brain. It's, it's nice when it works. Roman mythology. 
And there's a legitimate reaction out of Dupree. Yep, feeling a little bested here. They've put all their pennies into utility and deagles, and this could be the final round of play for our series of the day. Yep, refresh has opened up onto Lucky already. They get the casualty and disappear. There's nothing for Astralis to do. They'll dump their util. They're looking for a quick plant, it seems like. The counter util from Shush. Yeah, they're just going in. And it should be a death on to refresh. Cadian's got two sitting ducks waiting for him. He wants to finish it right here, and he will.